Hey, welcome to my channel. Well, in this episode, we are gonna take a look at a 3D printer called the Sapphire Pro. You have no idea what the Sapphire Pro is? Well, I'm gonna show you, watch this. So the folks at Sapphire Pro said, Steve, would you like to review a 3D printer? And I said, I know nothing about 3D printers. They said it takes about three hours to set up if you know nothing about them. But if you know somebody who does, it takes about 30 minutes to set up. So this is the Sapphire Pro box that they sent me right here. And they didn't send me this, but this is Andre. And he knows everything about 3D printers. So uh, Andre is going to... Uh, help me set this up. So we're gonna do that right now. So this is the box that arrived in the mail. Let Andre open this up and I will film him opening the box. Take it away, Andre. So while Andre is opening the box, check this out back here. He's got a 3D printer already and uh, he kind of loves it, but he was pretty excited when I told him about the Sapphire Pro. So uh, we're gonna check that out. Oh, look at this, he's got the box open. Woohoo! SD card, looks like a four gig, but it's got a metal frame, which is pretty key. That's got some uh, some beef behind it. I would be so lost in this build. Wow, check that out. There's your base. Wow. Woo! LCD display. LCD display. So, oh, okay. Yeah, then you know all the information all right. when you're loading your files. So nice that's metal your, build. That looks like some serious kit, man. Yank it out, Andre. Oh my god. So, I'll hang on to the box. Yeah. There we go. Pull up the base. So, ooh, look at that. Nice power button, proper nice. connection. It's uh, a lot of the cheaper printers um, don't uh, come with like switches and stuff like this. So it's like raw power and open expose stuff. So this is already nice. It's got a fan in the back of the power supply. I think you can see underneath. Oh, wow. Look there you go. There's the insides. So there's your control board. So this is what controls all your inputs. There's running to the board, the, uh, the LCD. Nice power supply with a built-in fan. Uh, that's pretty good. A accessory fan over here to clear everything. Actually, multiple fans. And the other box over here, you said it would be the filament? So you've got two, actually, I think. You've got a Holy silver. Crap. What's that? Holy. Ooh, it's silver, a silver a PLA. So I've okay. done some things silver. Nice. And what's the second one? Green. Ooh. Yeah. That's another PLA, just your normal green. That's pretty nice. Wow, very nice. You know, one kilogram, that'll last you for a bit. I don't know if there's a spool. There is a little spool. I don't know if you get a spool holder that's with it. One. It's that's got a little mini, little a silver. Mini one to get this yep. So I haven't seen the manual yet. Here it is. So that'll tell us how to build it. Actually, this is not bad. Motherboard installation. Oh yeah, look at that. Like, you know, put the four posts in. One, two, three, four. Set them all up. There's your thread screws and stuff like this. And just go and build it, tighten it. This, I think, from reading when I read it, when you told me about it, it's got a self-leveling bed, which nice. is really nice. So but that means, you know, it sets it, it checks all four points when it goes through and just says, okay, I'm good, and goes and prints. And it, it, it takes over for any slants, you know, if you're not too far out. So, all right. <laughs> We're in the home run. Andre is about to connect all the power cables and then we're gonna turn it on for the very first time. All right, so the Frankenstein printer is now running. Andre has had this for one whole week and he's printed me some really cool things for my Mavic Mini, my Peridonafi, my Mavic Air, my Mavic 2 Pro. So he made me prop holders for the Peridonafi. Check that out. Peridonafi never had prop holders. The props fly all over the place. So now I have prop holders. All right, check this out. This is the Mavic Mini. He made me something for the Mavic Mini. Are you ready? Ta-da! Prop holders for the Mavic Mini. And yes, it fits in the case. So let me pull that out and show you. So he's got uh, a nice little prop holder for the top and one for the bottom. 
The bottom one is really cool because it's, it's a clip. It clips in the bottom in your vent and it clips into your gimbal guard and it covers the props. That was made on this really cool 3D printer. There's more. Also a really cool prop holder for the Mavic 2 Pro or the Mavic 2 Zoom. For the Autel Evo, check this out. This is one thing the Autel Evo is missing. The controller needs some sort of device to keep your little joysticks in place. Uh, so when you toss it in your bag or whatnot, it doesn't get messed up and this goes over the controller to hold the joysticks in place. Finally, he made me this really cool DJI cover gimbal protector holder thingy for the DJI Spark. Now this one we're gonna talk about a little bit cause he's gonna explain to me how he made this. All right, so here we get into 3D printers for dummies like me who know nothing about 3D printers. So I'm gonna get Andre to explain how he built this on this printer exactly where we got the file, how he made everything work. So here we go. So Andre, you're right over here. I understand that you just went to a website called Thingiverse. You just typed in DJI Spark mm -hmm. and you saw all the products you could make. This was one of them. Yeah. So you grabbed the file, correct? Yes. Then I, then I also understand that it's not as simple as taking that file and sticking it into our 3D printer down here with a micro SD card and printing because this printer is just like any printer you would buy, you know, at home that it's a laser printer, dot matrix printer or whatnot. They are all different. So the file you get, it doesn't really know what your printer is. So that's why you have something in your computer that allows you to play with the properties and sets up the information to go to that printer. When it comes to 3D printing, I've just learned all this. You need something called Slicer Software to take that file that you get off Thingiverse, which is an STL file? Correct. STL file and you have to put it into this other piece of software that's going to slice it for your type of printer here. And Andre has this little design on his screen right there. So what is the software you're using now, Andre? So I'm using Simplified 3D. Uh, you, it's a paid software. I did buy it. I, I knew I was doing enough 3D printing that I wanted it. You can get free stuff. One is the best one that's free right now. It's called Cura. Uh, and it just takes a little bit of time and you, like like you said, I told the printer, these are my settings. I did a little bit of testing with the material because every material is different as well. But I basically said, okay, the printer I'm working with has X volume, size, width, height, and dimension. So you just punch all this information into the software. Well, that's the first part, but then you have to say a few other things, your preferences. Yes, so the temperature I want to use and everything. So you'll see I just flip that over to do it. And there are a bunch of settings in here. So it's stuff you got to get used to your software and you keep printing. And there's tests. There's test files you can do, which will tell you a bunch of information. So the first thing I learned was this printer liked the, the PLA. This is the material, the green stuff. Uh, it needed to be hotter. It needed to print hotter to stick to this particular bed. So I bumped it up by five and then another to get to 10 degrees overall for my normal prints off my other one. Uh, and then otherwise it just worked right away. It's a really stable printer. So the software basically tells it how to print line by line. Now I noticed when I got in here, I saw you moving it. This thing was over on another, in another location and Andre lifted it up and literally moved it over here, which I've never seen anybody do with a 3D printer because they're usually like, don't move them. I've got them all balanced. Everything is perfect. So, uh, yeah, this is good enough that you can move the chassis. So for maintenance, if you need to bring it out to the bench to do anything, it's, it's less intrusive on the printer I found. So, and, and the design where, the head moves, uh, so this is called a bed leveling or bed raising style and everything. It's just, it's really nice. It's quiet as well, which is really nice to have. And the Bowden extruder, which means there's a motor here versus in the head. So a bunch of technical stuff, but really fun. I know nothing about 3D printers, but Andre's gonna walk me through how to actually make something on this 3D printer. Here we go. So what's the first thing I need to do? So we've loaded a file on. There's a card, little SD card slot, micro SD card slot in there. You okay. can connect it to your computer, but this, running it through the card's easier. It's more... All right, I see an interface and it looks yep. touch screen. What do it I do? Is. Which one of these do I hit? Printing. Printing? Yep. All right. It goes into your file structure. Go for the BDF. BDF. And then what do I do? There's that file. Oh, so that's the file. It's that's the file. So yeah. it's reading this card off the micro SD card that you put in there. Yep. Okay. All right, so I click on that. Print this model, confirm. Confirm. And uh, it's doing some weird picture stuff and some letters so. and numbers flashing there. Do I hit something else? Nope, it's ready to go. So the bed is heating to 60 degrees Celsius, so right. it's a nice temperature. Okay. And now it's just gonna warm the extruder up to 220. 
and then off ah, it goes. So, so it's at 210. Yeah, it's getting there's warmer, your, 216. Yeah, and you could you could run, technically you could run two, a dual head. So you could have two different colors going at once uh, if you wanted to upgrade it. Uh, there's a stop file, other options. You can see your fan control. So the touch screen is Lots really of options. Nice. Oh, it's just... <laughs> It's a really nice yeah. printer, man. So basically, it sounds like your home printer. I have a laser printer at home, and when I go to print, I have to go to printer properties, and I can select all different things. Color print, do I want to print in landscape? Uh, do I want to print on this type of paper? All these other things, good quality, low quality, many different things like that. Or do I want to scan something? So it seems like it's got a lot of these options, but just in the world of 3D printing. I hear movement. What's yeah. happening here? Let's see. So now see. it's homing itself. So it's gone and it's tapped the uh, the limits. So right. it's going to go up, it's going to tap, and that's going to, I've done the bed alignment already once. So it knows when it's, it knows when it's when at the right height, so it doesn't go and squish the little extruder of yeah, all the goo coming out. Now it's over. Across. And I run a line across here and that gets the, the filament moving. So for those people watching, this is like a very expensive glue gun. Yeah. <laughs> Basically all it is. This is all we're watching here is an expensive glue gun, which is, is it doing something now? Yeah. It's shooting on some green yeah, crap. It's starting itself up. It's cleaning its head. So that's a clean oh, run. Oh, that's a cleaner. So, yeah. ah, it's getting rid of all that goop. Yeah. And now, good. okay. So that's now how. See how nice the line is. And now yeah. it's going to trace it. So Look we're actually doing one of these guys. Look at that. And there it goes. It makes a really nice, it's really well coordinated. And see, it's relatively quiet. So it's going around doing its thing. You know, I'll pull this up. Hopefully I have that in focus. And uh, show me what you, you have one made already in yep. gray. So here we go. Andre has them over here. So there we go. This is for a plane he's working on. And obviously he's put a brushless motor in there. What type of plane is that? It's going to be an A-10, a flight test A-10. A-10, that's going to be a big A-10. Yeah. That's so that's pretty cool. So all you had to buy was the brushless motor and you built the 3D mount for the motor. Well, and everything right. is pretty much free because you just go and grab it off the internet. Yeah. So. All right, hope you enjoyed this video on the Sapphire Pro. I'm gonna put links below where you can make your own parts for all your drones or your RC cars, your RC boats or anything you want. You know, it's the sky's the limit, I guess. So for now, I'm gonna say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Andre, any final words? I really enjoyed uh, this printer. Lots of, lots of opportunities, lots of possibilities in the future with this thing. That's great. And uh, you're probably gonna see in future videos since Andre uses the printer to build parts for his planes. Well, you're going to see planes in the future that Andre's built, parts with this printer, and they will be flying this summer. All right. Thanks for watching this video. Once again, links are below. Thanks to Sapphire Pro for sending us this. And if you have any questions, post them below. I can only answer some of your questions because I'm still learning, but Andre's going to monitor the video and he'll check every now and then and answer your more technical questions. He can give you all the help you need. All right. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video. Take care.